Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna build a full stack chat application using Fast API and React. This is without a doubt the most complete chat app on YouTube for Fast API. Let me demo it to you now. So when you log in or sign up, the user is fetched from the database along with their chat histories. And this is real time chat, meaning any new messages appear immediately for other users. And this app has a whole lot more like desktop and mobile support, image and file support within the messages, read receipts, the ability to have group chats and one-on-one -on -one chats, basically the whole nine yards. So you're probably wondering, how could we build such a high quality full stack chat app in a 10 minute YouTube video? It's because the initial setup is very easy and I'll be sharing all the code with you on GitHub to copy or download. This tutorial has three parts. Part one, we're gonna use a chat API called chatengine.io and set up a project which will host our chat rooms, our users, and our messages. In Fast API, we'll add a signup route and a login route, which will give all our users access to this chat engine project. And on the front end, we'll install one of chat engine's pre-built UIs, which natively connects to the project we set up on their back end. And we're done. Again, I'll be sharing all the code in the description, which will let us move quickly and easily. With that in mind, let's get started. Our first step is to set up a third-party chat server, which our users can access. So go to chatengine.io, it's the first link in the description, sign up and create a new project. Once you create a new project, Chat Engine gives you your own chat server, which your users can access and set up chat rooms on. We'll need to copy the project ID so our API calls can identify this new chat server. We'll also need the private key because it will give Fast API permissions to create and destroy users. Now, let's give all our new users access to this backend chat service with two Fast API routes. Now that we set up our project on chatengine.io, we're ready to start coding. So let's create a new project. CD into whatever folder you want and create a directory. I called mine Fast API React Chat. CD into that directory and then open that folder up in VS Code, either with code dot or dragging and dropping. Again, our first step is to set up our Fast API project and set up the routes within that project. So let's go and create a new terminal within VS Code. Then we'll make a directory called server. CD into server as well. The first step is to set up a .gitignore. So echo venv slash and pipe that into .gitignore. This is because we're gonna set up a virtual environment in Python and we'll do that now. So type Python or Python 3, depending on which version you want to use, .m venv venv. And this will set up a virtual environment within that server level. Once that's complete, we should activate it. Awesome. Now that we have our virtual environment set up, let's install all the requirements and all the dependencies we'll need to make fast API work. So I'm going to run this command pip install fast API quote uvicorn square bracket standard end quote and end bracket and requests. Fast API will run our server. Uvicorn will actually perform the server code at runtime and requests will make API calls to chatengine.io install all these dependencies. Now that we've installed them, run pip freeze squiggly uh, alligator bracket to requirements txt. And now we have our entire server set up. We have all the dependencies we need. We've marked them down and we've set up our git ignore. The last thing we'll want to do is touch main.py, which is going to be the main Python file we'll be writing our code into. 
In the next section, we'll add all the fast API code we need to make this server work and connect to Chat Engine. Now that we have our fast API project set up, it's time to start adding code to main.py and make this server work. So let's expand this window and start coding. The first thing we need to do is install or import all the dependencies we'll need, which are right here. So we'll need to import fast API because that's the server framework we're using. And we'll also need to import their core's middleware because we'll be making API calls from other websites or cross origin. We'll also import Pydantic and typing to help declare the interface for our request bodies for logging in and signing up. And lastly, we'll import requests because we'll be making API calls to chatengine.io in our code. Now let's declare the app. You can do app equals fast API parentheses and then we'll use add middleware to declare cores middleware. We'll allow all origins, credentials, all methods, and all headers. Next, let's define the two constants that will help us identify our chat engine server. So we'll declare two global strings, project ID and private key. Now, before we write the two routes, let's declare the user interface we'll be using to define the content of our request bodies. So whenever we log in or sign up, we'll be declaring a username, which is a string, and their secret, which is a string. We'll optionally add their email, their first name, and their last name, which can be a string or none, and by default, it's none. Now, let's add our first route, login. When a user logs in, we want to make an API call to chatengine.io to see if that user exists already. So we can make this get request to chatengine.io slash user slash me, and in the headers, identify our project ID, our user's username, and their secret. If a user with this username and secret exists in this project, we'll successfully return their JSON. Otherwise, we'll be returning a 404. Now let's do sign up. If we make an app post request to sign up, we'll be doing something similar. We'll be making an API call to chatengine.io, but instead of fetching a user with a get request, we'll be creating a new user with a post request. And we'll pass in, again, the user's username, secret, email, first name, and last name, if these three exist. And again, they've defaulted to none. We'll also declare the private key for this project so that we can, in fact, create a user properly. And we'll return their JSON. It's important to note that these are both post requests for login and sign up, and we're passing one of those user type objects as a request body. Last but not least, if we want to run this server, we'll have to declare the Uvicorn dependency and run main app dash dash reload and declare the port on 3001, which will be important later. Oh, we have the CD into server. Watch the changes in these directories. It's already in use. Give me a second while I shut down my other project. Sorry, I had fast API running somewhere else on my computer on port 3001. So if we rerun this command now, it should work. And we're seeing all green lights, which is a good sign. And if we go over to port 3001 on 127001, you'll be able to see detail not found. And that's because we're not specifying login or sign up in our route, and we're not making a post request with all the necessary data. So to validate this, what we can actually do in server is create a new file and call it request.rest. And then we can paste the following content in there. So if we make a post to localhost 3001 slash login with a username and secret in the body defined as application JSON, and we do the same type of request, but for signup as well, we'll be able to execute these REST requests on our server. To do that, you'll also need to install the REST client extension on VS Code. And you should be able to see the send request little lines here that we can click. So if I make up a username like Zach1234 and I send that request, it's now able to create a user on Chat Engine and return all the necessary data. Now what I can also do is declare the same username, Zach1234, for login and execute that and get the exact same data back. 
But if I don't make it the same username or password and I try to rerun this command, credentials were not provided. And if I try to make the same request with the same user data for sign up, you can see that the username is taken. So like that, we've very quickly set up a working login and sign up route, which connects all of our users to our chat engine backend. In the next section, we'll install one of chat engines pre-built UIs and connect a react app to that project and give all our users access to some full blown chat functionality. Again, now that our server is up and running and connecting new users to our chat server, let's set up a React project and connect our UI to that chat infrastructure, which we set up in part one. So let's start coding. First thing, let's keep our server running and set up another terminal. And I'll do that in an entirely new tab. Make sure that we're at the right level and not within server. As you can see, if I do PWD, we're not in server, we're at the top level fast API React chat. So we're good to go. Run NPX if you have it, create-react-app, and then your name, which I'll call client. Once this completes, it's gonna set up a boilerplate React project for us to run off. You can also install create React app globally and then run it with the CLI and it would just be create React app client. Cool. So that took me about two minutes to run and you can probably hear my computer making a bunch of noise. Hopefully it was a lot easier for you though, but we're good to go. So let's CD into client and let's install one dependency, which we'll need npm install react-chat-engine-pretty. There are many npm components which have been made by Chat Engine. This one is just really easy and really good looking. But if you wanna make something very customizable and powerful, I recommend going through their documentation where they advertise all of the components that they make. Let's install it. Hopefully this also doesn't take like three minutes to download. That was a bit better, but my computer's making a ton of noise. So let's open up the React project and see what we have inside. So this is the boilerplate. I know that we start with index.js where we render the app module in strict mode. Now I'm actually gonna disable strict mode because I know it doesn't do well with web sockets. And then we'll go inside app. Now I'm actually gonna replace all of this app code to start with the following code right here and it's only about 10 lines. We're gonna import the pretty chat window from React Chat Engine Pretty, and we're gonna create a chats page, and we're not gonna need the props for now, but what we'll do is we'll declare a pretty chat window with a height of a 100 virtual height, which is the height of the screen, and we'll pass in that user which we created in that example API call. So in this case, Zach1234 and pass1234 for this project. If we save it and we run npm run start within the client folder, we should actually see our full blown chat UI up and running immediately. It seems like the UI is being a little bit funny. So let me do this. I'm gonna wrap this in a parent div that is a height of 100 virtual height. And then I'll make this 100% of that. Perfect, this looks great. So now we're logged in as Zach and we'll be able to see any other users which have an account as well. And we'll be able to start setting up group chats or one-on-one -on -one chats with them. So we're basically done here. Let's recap where we stand and what's left to be done. So on the front end, we're importing a component from Chat Engine, which natively connects to the project which we set up. And we created two routes on our backend in main.py that will create a new user on Chat Engine like Zach1234 or fetch their data from the database if they exist for a login function. The last thing we need to do is just set up a login form and a signup form in React to create these users and fetch them. And once the data is present, route them to the chats page and pass all the user data in as props and we're fully good to go. So let's do that now. 
So in this last section, we're going to create a login page slash sign up page and a chats page and we'll render one or the other depending on if the user has been authenticated yet. Now I'm going to po paste quite a bit of code, but I'll explain it all and I'll give you the links to it in the description so that you can follow along at the same pace. So step one is we're actually going to create the logic to render the auth page or the chats page. So if you go back into app.js, this is the following code we're going to set up. We're going to have an auth page where if the user gets authenticated, a callback is going to occur and we're going to update the user state. And if the user actually exists now, we'll render the chats page and pass that user in as props. Let's start with the auth page so that we have everything we need to start the first one. So create a new file called authpage.js and paste in the following code again in the description. What this is, is a basic login and sign up form. So you can see a form here for logging in and a form here for signing up. And each have their own function on submit. And what we do is we use Axios to make a post request to our fast API server for sign up and login respectively with the correct username and secret or username secret, email first name and last name. We've already built the servers, so we know why we would be doing this. Let's save this file and let's save app.js as well. Last but not least, let's set up chats page. New file at the same level, chats page.js. And we're gonna be pasting that 10 lines of code, which we already did earlier. So I'll just put it in here. Again, the link is in the description. And you should replace this project ID with your own, um, with your own project. And you should also be doing that in the auth page as well. So you can see, actually no, it's just within chats page. So starting from the top, copy and paste the code from app.js in the description copy and paste the auth page code, and it's just line for line the exact same. And then with chats page, you just need to replace the project ID. Once you save all three files, starting from the top, we have a login form and a sign up form. When either submit, we make a call to the server, and then we trigger that on auth callback with all of that data that got returned from the server. At the top level file, when that on auth callback occurs, we set the user state and that triggers a re-rendering of the chats page with the user variable passed in as props. Hopping into the chats page, we take the props and we plug in the username and secret into this component for this project, and that should render the chat UI. And we should be good to go. And we should be good to go. So if I re-render this app now, you should see this login page. And if I log in as Zach, one, two, three, four, and a password of pass, one, two, three, four. We should be able to set up a new chat. And if I go into another component or another website on the same route, I can sign up as a new person. So I'll make sure I have a new name, Billy, pass, one, two, three, four. Email Billy at Billy.co. First name, Billy Bob. And Billy's logged in too. And he can set up a chat with Zach. And let's do exactly that now. Hopefully this is the right Zach. It looks like I had two and we're good to go. Yo, perfect. Now, if you wanna customize this UI a lot more, I do strongly recommend that you go through the chat engine API docs and they'll link you right to the main components which they support. You actually, as a matter of fact, this UI that you're seeing right here came from an entirely different chat component that looks nothing like it. It came from this very vanilla one right here. But with render functions and building your own components from scratch, you're essentially able to reconstruct an experience that looks as eloquent as this one right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I walked through it fast, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll answer you in the comments. Thanks for your time.